Hello everyone, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 39. Today is May the 7th and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and is going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Also, please remember to ask your questions um, on Menti so we can have our good Q&A session at the end. Let's start with the updates from the engineering department. I'll pass the word now to Luca. Thank you, Angie, and uh, happy Supermoon Day, everybody. So let's see what we have uh, here today. First of all, on Tuesday, we successfully released the new Sphere by Horizon version, 1.2.6 beta. You can find it on uh, our GitHub now. Feel free to download it and uh, to upgrade. Of course, uh, please uh, pay attention as, as usual to the installing instructions that we have prepared uh, for the different uh, operative systems. But this time around, um, it's, uh, it's also even more important and I'm, I'm about to, to tell you why. Uh, so what does it change uh, with this version? Uh, point number one is that uh, with uh, this version of Sphere by Horizon, uh, we have, um, um, it, it installs now on uh, macOS Catalina without any kind of a warning or a workaround uh, needed by the user. So very good news for all our users with uh, that specific operative system. Second, we did a change to the application ID to uh, io.horizon.sphere.by-horizon. And because of that, please check uh, our installation, installing instructions again. So especially if you are a Windows uh, user before running the new version 1.2.6 beta installer, the, there is a very easy procedure you need to follow if uh, and only if you are upgrading from an older version. And third, and this is mainly cosmetics, uh, thumbnail of the Sphere by Horizon, Horizon logo was corrupted on macOS and it is now fixed with this new release. This was about the new version of, of Sphere by Horizon being released, but we are already looking ahead and fixing another known issue uh, related to Sphere by Horizon and meanwhile assigning a priority to all the other backlog items in order to decide uh, what we want to prioritize next. Moreover, uh, there is an, uh, another version of Sphere by Horizon on which we are working, uh, which is the one integrating sidechain comments and that will go out uh, on the sidechain parallel testnet. So in particular, some si sidechain comments have already been integrated, meaning uh, the create a sidechain, the forward coins to the sidechain, to a sidechain, and also to um, the command to get the list of existing sidechains. Uh, also, all the design changes requested by the UX team have been ported, so the code is now ready for the intermediate review. This was a panoramic uh, uh, about all the different uh, um, Sphere by Horizon um, version, the one in production, the one just released, uh, the one being released next, uh, and the one for the sidechain testnet. Another project I always mention during the Weekly Insider is the new Explorer for both the main chain and the future sidechains. Uh, the intermediate code review was done. A few change requests were requested and they have already been addressed. So the code is ready again for the next iteration. And moreover, we are uh, uh, we decided to extend and refine the parsing me mechanism of sidechain data in the new Explorer. So we are also doing that in parallel. Speaking about sidechains, uh, this week we continued doing a lot of code review sessions on the sidechain SDK. And in fact, Alberto is not here with us today, uh, I think, because he's busy in a, another code review session at the moment. Uh, so. We, uh, we approved the changes related to the backward transfer certificate submission. Plus, we are doing the final review of Latus Forger changes that allow to support main chain forks processing in the sidechain. And last but not least, we are also working on the Zendu CryptoLib integration and snark proofs in backward transfer certificates because we are, we are already reviewing the, um, backward transfer cert, um, the backward transfer. Uh, um, certificates the, the proof yet. 
that's uh, um, next uh, phase. My uh, very last update is related to Zendi. Uh, on Monday, we started communicating to all our partners and exchanges the new, the next upcoming uh, deprecation date. We have prepared a text to be used for our emails, uh, messages. Uh, so we started the first round of notification with mo one month of notice, uh, as usual, because the deprecation will be around the 2nd of June. We did an internal sync up too on all the activities related to the preparation of next ZND, for which we plan to publish on May 18. And uh, this focus, the focus of this version will be maintenance. Then the specific contents are going to be communicated soon, also with a blog post in a joint uh, effort with the marketing team. As you can see, there is really a lot going on and the engineering team is doing uh, its best to deliver as quickly as possible. The main focus remains Horizon Sidechains Beta, for which we'll update everybody at the earliest convenience also about the delivery date. That's it for now. I talked too much as, you, as always. Uh, back to Angie. Awesome. Thank you, Luca, for the great updates. Let's continue with Alan for some note updates. Hi, everybody. Um, just a couple quick updates. The first one is, I thought I'd just mention that the number of secure nodes seems to have evened out at about 35,500 over the last couple months. But secure nodes, uh, there still seems to be some growth there. We're up to about 3,800. On the updates for the tracking servers themselves, we're still going through code review of some of the updates and some of that's dependent upon Chronix time and Chronix now busy with getting the new version of Zend out. So it might not be until the end of the month or maybe even after the deprecation before we're able to deploy any updates to the tracking servers. And that's the update for now. Thanks, Angie. Thank you, Alan. Let's continue with Spencer for the help desk updates. Good Thursday, everyone. Uh, I posted the help desk graphics into the weekly Insider Companion channel. Over 66% of the help desk tickets were in support of the faucet. Uh, get Zen.cash. The balance of tickets were mostly Sphere by Horizon questions about restoring the 24-word backup phrase. Typically, a user would have installed Sphere on another computer and then tried to log into an account that simply didn't exist on that computer. I'd like to point out to our users that Horizon does not have access to any backup phrases or private keys for any wallet. The user must preserve and protect their own backup phrase. The user manual in Sphere under the Help menu can give you guidance. And last, I would like to give a shout out to Dean Steinbeck, our corporate counsel, for reporting to the Help Desk a very obscure but important issue with one of our products. The information that he supplied to the Help Desk will aid our developers in improving our products. So once again, oh, also Dean provided some great feature requests for a future version of Sphere. So thank you, Dean. Spencer, please stop feeding his ego. Um, it's already out of control. Is it? Okay. I'm, I'm glowing <laughs> right now. I'm glowing. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, Next, all all yeah. well deserved. Next, Linda is going to start thanking Dean publicly for all of his design work. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's continue with Gustavo for some UX updates. Hi hey everyone, happy Thursday. So super quick update from me. And the only, the only thing I can advance is we continue working towards the community hub. So it's going to be the transition of the faucet to a community hub. And we continue working on HD development. And that's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's now welcome Rowan for some BD updates. Uh, oh. Hello, everyone. Yeah, he's not uh, here. Rowan, ahead, no. Rowan is not here, so I will do a quick update. So this week, uh, Rowan finished uh, our integration with uh, CoinGecko. Particularly, they we are not we are about our development activities in a full spectrum. So now they are watching our GitHub um, more like fully. Also, we have been integrated with their BIM updates, and I uh, pushed some updates, some of, uh, some of our recent updates there. And apart from that, uh, we are also in the process uh, of uh, like fixing our integration with uh, CryptoWatch 
which seems to be quite a popular uh, website amongst the crypto community and is part of the Kraken exchange now. Um, we had our uh, updated section broken there, which is already fixed there, and uh, our branding will be updated in the coming days there. Also, um, a lot of is going on in the background for the BD, BD department, but unfortunately we are not able to share most of it publicly. But be assured that we are doing a lot to expand our reach to new exchanges and get support from new partners. That's all from us. Thank you, Vano. Now let's welcome Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy May and happy Thursday. So um, on our social media side, the community submission for the Horizon mascot meet, uh, naming competition ended on Tuesday. And we are in a voting stage now. So the voting is open for the community. Uh, we have top 10 names as voting options. Uh, and we have already received over 100 votes. So if you have the rest, uh, so you will have, uh, you will have the rest of the week to cast your vote and we will review uh, our mascot's name on Monday. So, uh, and then on top of that, uh, uh, the mascot also has some surprise for us. So please stay tuned. Uh, and then we put a fun survey on Fawcett uh, a few days ago, asking people what the first thing they want to do after COVID-19 is over. And we received over 500 responses. And we will share the res uh, results on our social media. And then I'm sure you will find some of them resonating. And then also there is a, uh, a community giveaway of $100. Uh, $50 in Zen for the month of May. If you're regular users of our faucet, then you probably already know that because it's on our faucet. So really, you know, uh, more reason to use our faucet every day. And then other than that, we just work uh, fiercely um, on the background, uh, working with other divisions on preparing for the release of our sidechain beta, Horizon developer environment, and the new community hub. So uh, very exciting overall and uh, a lot to look forward to. That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Really quick update for me. Uh, we don't have any new changes on the faucet this week. We're still monitoring uh, the usage of the changes we've implemented over the last couple of months, including the sweet huddle bonus and wallet verification. And we're consistently making efforts to improve the user experience there. Both of those services have been really well uh, regarded and are being used um, far more than I thought they would. So really happy with everything going on uh, in that sense. Also, a quick update on the games. I mentioned a couple month, months ago that we're working to integrate um, Zen into games where you can actually earn some Zen by playing uh, game games on your iPhone or on your Android. So we're steadily marching ahead towards that. Uh, we should have a test version of the game available within two to three weeks. And hopefully shortly after that, it will be live to the public. So uh, stay tuned. It's just a first step. Our vision here is to have Zen integrated into many games. So no matter what it is you're interested in playing, you have an opportunity to enjoy enjoy yourself and also earn some zen in the process that's it for me this week thanks thank you lucy and jonathan let's continue with rosario for product and engineering hi guys uh so we've had an effort to uh, clean up our github and that's going really well so shout out to chronic for mentoring ruben and you angie for uh, um, building, who are building templates uh, to ensure that the GitHub issues that we receive from our community members have all the required information so that our developers can take proper action and, and um, implement fixes, et cetera. So I have a hard focus to uh, focus on developer relations. And what does that mean? So uh, creating a strategy and a funnel to bring developers to build on our network. And uh, this means identifying uh, activities that will be available through HDE, um, planning hackathons via our partner, Major League Hacking, and having uh, competitions uh, 
with incentives. Uh, and of course, uh, what I would love is to have a, a voting of the coolest uh, app on our uh, first side chain. So uh, that is upcoming and still planning. So I'll be working very, very closely with course marketing, uh, engineering team, and uh, UX, and many others to make this a success. Uh, we had our May prioritization uh, just uh, recently, and the focus for our, our team is going to be Zendi, as uh, Luca mentioned, that's our maintenance release, and of course, our sidechain release, so that's also creating a testnet environment uh, that our infrastructure team is going to be doing, and uh, having the a sphere release for uh, for site chains as well, uh, and this is all for testnet. And uh, we also are initiating an effort uh, this later this month and may bleed into June uh, to support our uh, China explorers uh, and our marketing newsroom. And as Luca mentioned, I, I do want to highlight that we are going to be uh, clearing off or making an effort to clear off the Sphere backlog. And once that's complete, we'll be accepting new feature requests. But uh, right now, the focus is going to be to clean clean up uh, what we currently have. And uh, that's it for now, now, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to share any updates or comments? Yeah, thanks, Angie. Uh, I was just thinking about we have a, a number of do different interest and focus groups. A lot of people come to the community for uh, many different reasons. Um, you know, we have the folks that are interested in in privacy for private transactions, uh, node operators, uh, miners. We certainly have vendors and, and partners. And what Rosario just mentioned, uh, oh, of course, the people that um, – want to have adoption of cryptocurrency, which is, uh, we can see that with the faucet, uh, a lot of people learning adoption there. So, but what Rosario just mentioned about uh, bringing on developers is a, is a really big one. Um, and that gives us a lot of vi visibility into uh, the existing crypto community uh, that are, is just developing distributed applications. Uh, and it's going to allow us to leverage into uh, other types of applications where people are looking for a distributed uh, system that isn't running on some large cloud system like uh, Amazon Web Services or Azure or uh, other systems like that. And so there, there's a, a lot of focus and attention and tools. Uh, and and uh, this is something new for, for Horizon. It's certainly not new for Horizon developers to be developing. Uh, but there, there's you're going to be hearing more and more about this. And this doesn't take away from the focus on any of the other areas. It's just uh, as we go through, we cycle through these different areas of focus as they become topical. Keeps it interesting, too. So I'm excited for this. Thanks. Thank you, Ralph. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part in the Q&A session. Thanks, Angie. And Ralph, I really love the breakdown of the different types of users we have in the in the. Uh, community and our ecosystem and the developers are, are you know obviously always a really important part of this project a key part of this project uh, but we're about to kick off some major efforts to to really cater towards um, getting more developers into the community in particular using our our sidechain applications or building sidechain applications but more to come on that um, what i did want to talk about today and this this will not make me the most popular person but Obviously, we need to be responsible with how we're managing this project and just to let the community know that we are being, you know, uh, completely responsible with uh, doing the most we, we can with what we have. So I'll start with a, a very unpleasant fact is that since the middle of February uh, through, say, depending where you want to start the benchmark, but if, if you started from the middle of February, when Zen was about $15, our budget's down about 60%. Uh, early March, uh, not too not too long ago, in early March, Zeno was around ten dollars. So from there, our budget's down about forty percent. So no matter how you want to split, slice it, and even before that, that was really just a few month relief from a, a two year bear market. So you know the the bottom line is we're, we're looking at uh, you know a, a not so great resource picture. Now clearly we we built this twenty twenty roadmap. Uh, to be very ambitious, but ambitious in a realistic way, but uh, to focus on some of the most important deliverables that we can bring to market to make this project stand out 
and become actually a very useful piece of technology or platform that's extremely useful to drive real world use cases into the ecosystem. So the Zen ultimately could be, uh, you know, more than just a HODL coin, for instance, right? And, and you know, clearly, we've already been doing that across the board over the last few years, building out different ways to use Zen, uh, different ways to, you know, just grow the ecosystem and create this peer to peer economy. Uh, but we need to go further, and that's what the whole point of the 2020 roadmap was. And um, you know, that said, that roadmap costs resources, and our resources are significantly down and have remained depressed. So, what are we going to do about it? You've heard me talk way probably much more than that I'm comfortable with, and probably much more than you want to hear about budgets. And just we have to operate within the reality that we find ourselves, and you know, we have to overcome no matter what kind of an environment we find ourselves in. So what are we going to do? We're, we're looking at what we're calling Budget Plan C. And, you know, the whole point of this is let's start with the, the 2020 roadmap as our framework and, and pare down uh, all scope of everything that we're funding that isn't directly tied to key roadmap deliverables. So, so basically, we, we want to continue the commitments towards this roadmap, but then anything else that isn't directly tied toward, um, to those deliverables, we, we need to scale back on. So some good news is that we're very lucky to have uh, partners in extremely good relationships with these partners um, to the point where they're, you know, some of our key, say, software partners and key other, other vendors are taking voluntary rate cuts to continue working with us. So they recognize the situation that we're in and, and they're sympathetic and they are committed you know, jointly with us to achieving our mission. So they're taking voluntary cuts, and, and that's just fantastic. And and I think it's, you know, you, you do see this in normal business uh, with you know vendor client relationships, but the you know the the speed with which the the speed and, and just the the good attitude with which people have been working with us is, is just absolutely phenomenal. So needless to say, and this has been going on for some time now, discretionary spending has been cut and will remain cut. So we're not spending money on on things that aren't directly linked to accomplishing a roadmap that have been programmed into our budget. Uh, and then from here, we have to make hard decisions and hard decisions on team cuts as well. And, and this sucks because we, we've been here way too often. And you know, what I can say is we we behave more like a family than a company, and that's not going to change. So the people that you see here, you know and love, aren't going to go away unless they have some personal circumstances where they have to go away. Um, but we want to keep everyone around uh, to the extent that we can, but we, we can't afford to, you know, unfortunately, um, keep making payments like we have uh, to, across the board. So we, we've already, I'll just give one example, and I'm not going to name names here, but one example of a key team member who's been with us for, you know, basically since the beginning and who contributes significantly across the board is offering to do even more work uh, as a pure volunteer. So. I just want you guys in the community to know, like, this isn't about going through a list and, and saying, you know, who's going to have to have some hourly reductions or whatnot. But I want you to know the kinds of people that you're working with here or, or that are part of this project and building this ecosystem. The kinds of people that we have here are those who are willing to sacrifice, you know, for, for the good of accomplishing the mission of what we're doing because they believe in what we're doing. Uh, and they want to be part of it. And that's just something that is abnormal. That's not something that you see in the normal normal business world. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this team and very proud to be part of this ecosystem. Okay, so um, what else? Um, let's see, so that, that's the, the budget, you know, budget drill that we're going through currently. And, you know, it, we're able to drive down costs, at least from a, you know, in, in theory, we should be able to drive our, our cost projections down to where we, they're sustainable within the budget that we have. Clearly, the price of Zen is highly volatile. So our budget, therefore, is highly volatile. There's not much we can do about that. We, we do have some new revenue sources in, incoming. Uh, and, you know, thank you, Jonathan and the growth team for that. It's still not enough to really, you know, make too much of a dent in the overall budget. So we, we do have to go through this, this uh, drill. We do have to drive our costs down. But the good news is it looks like we're able to drive our costs down to what is a reasonably sustainable level. Um, so. And you know, the thing that I'll leave out, uh, leave off with on that conversation is that, you know, I, I do like to leave off on a good note because this project just has way too many good things going for it uh, to to leave that on on a you know a dour note. So 
the, the reality is we have some really good things, really good news on the, the horizon. I always like to quote that. Um, that we'll be, we'll be discussing in the coming weeks. Everything from a major software release for major innovation on sidechain beta to game integrations that are using Zen uh, to business development deals that we'll be able to actually start talking about uh, and more. So, um, you know, th- there's still a lot going on. Let, let's not be uh, too depressed about it and let's think about the future. So, so going, th- I'll, I'll leave that there and we can address any questions in the Q&A afterward. But um, going beyond that, so on the marketing side, not that the marketing team doesn't already have enough to do, but we are rethinking the messaging for the website and all of our communications. Um, so there's always ongoing work for improving the website. There's literally always a pipeline of work ongoing for that based on actual user experience and, and user dat, uh, data that we have on uh, just seeing how people interact with the website, seeing what they care about, and you know, uh, doing more of what they care about and removing things that they don't seem to care about uh, near real time. But we are going to do a quick messaging uh, you know, drill to see when you land on the website, uh, is the message that you're getting quickly meaningful? And is it what we want you to get? Like, is it really, is it the essence of what is Horizon, what we're trying to do with our mission or, or not? Is it, is it targeting the, you know, the, the user that we're, we're meaning to target or is it not? Uh, I don't know. So we're going to go through that drill. Um, on the product side, you, you heard uh, Luca mentioned and, and Rosaria mentioned that we had a recent Sphere by Horizon release, 1.2.6 beta. Uh, to fix the notarization issue. Uh, so big thanks to Chronic, Paolo, and everyone who helped on that, that quick product release. Uh, it's really important to be able to do that and also important that we're, we're nearly complete burning through the known issues. Uh, so we had a known issue backlog when we took this product in-house. Nearly complete burning through them in pretty quick, uh, quick, uh, pretty quick sequence. And then from there, you're gonna, you, know, you should expect a, a fresh Sphere by Horizon roadmap, and this is where we'll be talking about new features. Not quite there, but we're getting close. <clears throat> and then the, I'll, I'll uh, wrap up here by saying every business in the world talks about caring about their customers, at least the good businesses do. The great businesses talk about being obsessed with their customers, and there are only a handful of businesses that are truly obsessed with their customers. And these are the businesses that truly scale and that we all use all the time, and we know and love them. Um, we want to be one of these organizations that obsesses over our users. So uh, we, we don't have customers in the traditional sense, but we have users, and we have a whole bunch of different types of users. Um, so every every uh, you know subgroup that we have in this organization uh, cares about certain uh, types of users. Now, the next type of user that we're going to be obsessing over are going to be developers. And this links back to what Rolf said uh, just before me, is that developers are you know such a key part of building these ecosystems. So uh, we, we are about to launch a huge campaign uh, catered specifically to developers and attracting them into the ecosystem, but not just attracting them in, but giving them uh, useful work opportunities and potentially lucrative work opportunities to contribute meaningfully into the ecosystem. So there's a lot to be excited about here. And it starts with the sidechain beta uh, in combination with the Horizon Developer Environment, HDE, and then also combines with some of these, you know, this uh, uh, basically spree of hackathons that we're going to be doing with our partner, Major League Hacking. So we're, we're talking about dozens of hackathons, initially virtual, and then hopefully uh, at some point we can we can have in-person hackathons. But the whole goal here is to introduce what we're doing, introduce the technology, the tools, and then combine that with resources and a little bit of direction to where we need the most help and really catalyze a significant uh, developer uh, process or you know, developer community within our ecosystem. So a, a question that we have here is, how are we going to resource this? Because I started this conversation with, you know, we're, we're going through constant budget constraints and the, and the constraints seem to be getting tighter, which is the opposite of what we want them to be doing over time. So we need to think deeply about how are we going to resource this in a meaningful way. So we don't want to just, if we under-resource this, then that means we're, we're, we're going to have a suboptimal outcome. And there's also a possibility that, you know, if we, if we devoted too many resources quickly in a way that can't be productively deployed. That could also be suboptimal. I I think, I wish we had that problem initially. We have the um, going out of the gate here, but it's something that we can think about and, you know, hopefully we can come up with some good ideas on that. But we are uh, baking resources into these developer competitions like Rosario has been talking about. So I'm very excited about those. Once we have the tool market, uh, in particular with sidechain beta and the SDK, 
then we're going to have uh, better opportunities to start engaging with community developers and point them in the, uh, some meaningful directions to actually contribute uh, substantially to the ecosystem. So we're also thinking, what else can we do? So it's not just about throwing resources at a problem and hoping that, that we get good results. We also want to be smart about how we're applying resources, but we want to do things like make sure that we're, we're addressing developer needs, understanding what they want, what can make their lives better, making sure that we're giving them the tools to productively contribute. So anyway, there's a lot, a lot to that, but it's really exciting. We're about to kick off this huge campaign uh, in coordination with the very exciting sidechain beta and HDE releases. So that's all I've got, guys, and we can open it up here to questions. Thank you, Rob. Um, the first question is, when will be the upcoming software releases? Okay, so um, Luca, do you want to take a stab at the actual dates? So I know we have the the next Zen D release, but then we also have we haven't committed yet to the sidechain beta release, but we are targeting uh, towards the end of the month. But Luca, yeah, you have any more detail there, please? Yeah, exactly. In fact, the the question is uh, a bit generic. Uh, we have uh, different softwares. One of them is Zen D. So uh, for that, we have uh, the target date uh, of May eighteen because we need at least a window of two weeks for our uh, partners, but also for the community to upgrade uh, if you are an node operator, if you are a miner, and so on. And uh, uh, for what regards uh, uh, Sphere by Ryzen, we will have another software release for sure uh, before June the 2nd, because we need uh, Sphere by Ryzen to be compatible uh, with uh, the new Zen D, uh, the, the new upcoming Zen D. So for that, I think we uh, planned something like uh, one week before the June the second, and then we will have a sidechain beta. Uh, as Rob just mentioned, we have we don't have a, a public date for that, but uh, hopefully we'll follow uh, very soon. We are uh, tracking uh, the development in order to calculate the the precise re uh, release date. So we'll keep you posted on that. Rob, if I could jump in here, there's a framing to the question that I that I think why it's so popular on Menti um, is the, you know we've been working on the the side chain for a few years now, and the side chain beta is 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 pretty big deal. Um, I don't fully understand exactly what's going to be you know in the capabilities of the side chain beta. I'm pretty sure I have a, a good idea, but maybe we could do a quick review. Is 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 when the side chain beta comes out? Is that something that software developers are actually going to be uh, to develop applications on? Is that is that why all the you know we're doing all the hackathons? Is that right there, and Roth? You just nailed it. That's exactly right. So and and this is why we we uh, added a little bit more scope to the beta because the the constraint here is we wanted to release a complete product that would be useful to develop developers. That's exactly right. So, okay, so that that's that's a, a really big deal, right? So, I mean, that's that's the new and unique and different software that we've been waiting on that can show how Horizon is completely different from uh, any of the other projects out there. So, huh? yeah. No, you're exactly right. So alpha, for instance, the sidechain alpha was really just a demo for developers to give them a flavor of what's what's what they will be able to do. Beta is going to be, I, I, you know, maybe I'll be chastised for saying this, but a complete product. Um, so it's not the the big Zendu product that we're looking to deliver by the end of the year, but it's a complete product that developers can take and actually deploy applications. It'll be on our test net, but the applications will be working on that test net. Okay, is that on a, like a, a private dev net or on the public test net that people will actually be able to do this on? Rolf, you're getting some great questions today. <laughs> That's you know, <laughs> it's a, a it yeah. Yeah, yeah, please look at no, go ahead. A public uh, parallel test net. So if you uh, start a sidechain, for example, I can see that, uh, for instance, through my sphere by Ryzen that uh, I have uh, uh, installed on my machine. So it's a uh, it's a real uh, public test net. It's just not our uh, um, main test net, but it's a it's a parallel uh, test net public. Oh wow, that that that's great. So we might want to point some miners at that and make it uh, you know uh, get going and and be able to, be able to do all sorts of different things with that. Not sure if we want to point miners at it, but that's really exciting. Okay, that's so in May. No 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 six month to twelve month slip. 
N- no, no firm firm date, uh, but it's coming very soon. Uh, so it's uh, and, and right now the, some of the complexity relies on the the main chain modifications, uh, where you know the, the teams. The C++ team is really focused on, on that, and Alberto is doing the code review. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so it should be coming very soon. Awesome. Okay. And uh, people are asking, yeah, don't, uh, Stoic Nate, thanks. Don't, don't put A6 yeah. or GPUs on the test net. Let's just, uh, you know, do CPU mining on the test net. That makes sense. Something we didn't say is that we are also um, going to have a faucet, a parallel faucet on the parallel test net so that uh, the Java developers will automatically get uh, test zen to, for example, do forward transfer from the main chain to the side chain. And uh, um, following up what uh, Rosario was mentioning, uh, the reason why we are uh, very focused on the main chain changes is also because uh, with the uh, uh, sidechain beta, we are closing the circle. So we are introducing also backward transfers. And this means that uh, the main chain needs to be able to uh, receive certificates and evaluate them um, to decide if to accept them or not. So these are the very last changes we are doing there. Okay. And uh, Luca, uh, you mentioned that uh, this is Java developer, so is the primary language of the test net, or sorry, the uh, sidechain going to be Java or a form of Java? Java will be the first language, yes, to uh, to be used uh, with our sidechain SDK. This uh, doesn't prevent us to add any other language in the future, but it, it will be the, uh, the starting one, also because it's uh, so widely used worldwide. Oh, yeah. And everybody learns Java in uh, their uh, college computer uh, education courses. It's very widely used. That's, that's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. That's all around. Very, very exciting. Um, so the second question is, has Horizon considered implementing a custom algorithm such as Prog POW? Um, so no, we haven't, uh, and, and this just hasn't been our focus. It, that's not to say that that we won't, in, in particular, because now we're we're uh, you know we're we're getting close to actually you know all, all focus has been on side chains. We're not all. I mean, we do like Luca pointed out. We have a bunch of different software that we work on, but the, the main innovative thing, the thing that we're we're doing for competitive advantage for what makes us unique and and valuable, has been side chains. So. Um, you know, as, as that work matures, uh, or as we get more resources and can and can use resources to do different things, or importantly, as other developers come into our community, uh, you know, we, we're more than open to different ideas like that. And in particular, as we start getting voting systems, as we have a, a Horizon Community Council that will be able to aggregate this type of sentiment to really understand what you. What does our community really care about and what, what are the kinds of things that they want to see? As of right now, as an organization, as the foundation, we're focusing really all efforts on that main technology deliverable and then the supporting stuff that goes with it. And then, you know, the products like Sphere by Horizon that make these things accessible to the community. So that, that's really the, the roadmap for us. And we don't have uh, something like Prog POW on, on the roadmap yet, but that's not to say that it can't be in the future. Thank you, Rob. The last question is, will the sidechain software develop kit have a way to be used with an integrated development environment like Visual Studio Code? Mm, so, I mean, at, out of the gate, and I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to answer this. So, Chronic, I don't know if you want to chime in on this, but... Uh, I don't think Chronic or... is here, but uh, okay. I, can, um, I can maybe take this. So in reality, okay, we, we talked about Java as being the first language to be used uh, with our sidechain SDK. And in reality, uh, Java developers typically use always two main IDs, which are IntelliJ and Eclipse, with Eclipse being a bit uh, older than IntelliJ. Um, so of course, yes, the developer can use them on other uh, IDE or these two IDEs that I mentioned locally on their machine. Uh, to to use the SDK and uh, develop their own uh, sidechain application. Uh, IntelliJ, for sure, is an IDE 
uh, it belongs to the IDE category of the tech stack, like, let me say. While I'm not sure about uh, vis- vis- uh, Visual Studio Code, I believe it's mainly a source code editor. But uh, in any case, if Visual Studio Code is uh, also an IDE, like IntelliJ or Eclipse, then yes, it will be able, um, it, it can be used by the Java de- developer. There are also other crypto projects that have uh, a web page with some sort of IDE integrated. I know that Superblocks is used in, in some cases, uh, which to my knowledge is basically IntelliJ ported to the web. But I believe it's uh, this is not optimal for the Java developer. Typically, he prefers to use the client on their machine on its machine uh, because it's faster, performs better, and overall has less limitations. However, something uh, we may also consider for the future. And uh, on the other hand, for sure, uh, a web portal with our documentation and the step by step. path required to be followed, for example, to start a sidechain is uh, also is a priority also for us. This is something we we will um, uh, we will have. That's it. Thank you, Luca. Um, that's it. These are the uh, top three questions for today's Weekly Insider. Uh, so we will post rest of the questions and answers on Weekly Insider's chat channel here on Discord. And if you have any more questions, you can ask us anytime or comment if you are listening to this on YouTube. Uh, Thank you and stay safe. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. See you in the next Weekly Insider. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.